Hello and welcome to the Start Partnership. My name is Jenny Kitching. This series of CDs is unique. You will find nothing else like it. It is also marvelously effective. I'm glad to have this opportunity to talk with you about the mind and its relationship to the smoking behavior. There are many behaviors we do automatically that are really useful. Though you are probably listening to this because this particular behavior is one you would like to stop doing automatically. I have helped hundreds of people to do this and now I am helping you. Firstly, let's be clear on our approach here. I don't need you to believe everything I say. I only ask you to be wise about smoking and your mind will do the rest. Being wise for our purposes means being willing. Just be willing to listen, to process, to think. Interested. Be interested in the process. Successful. And when you are successful, enjoy that success. You will find being wise is something you will apply to anything new that you wish to undertake or learn more about in your future. You perhaps already now are processing just how often you have put previous concerns to one side and become willing, interested, successful in your learning. And as you enjoyed that success, became even more willing to engage with that activity again. Driving a car maybe. Running a marathon. Hosting a dinner party. Becoming married. All these are activities that were a little daunting when we first approached them and now we enjoy with ease. Hopefully. This series is divided into three distinct sections. The first two sections must only be listened to when you can safely relax completely. So, particularly, do not listen to these whilst driving or operating machinery. OK, the machine you are playing these tracks on is fine. You know what I mean. The first section is processing. Processing is what you are doing all of the time, mostly without being aware of it. You may learn some things about smoking that presently are hidden from your awareness. Your awareness is your consciousness, your conscious mind. The second section is treatment. We, you and I, shall be treating the smoking behaviour so as to get you to the point whereby you choose to do something else and you don't need to be aware of what that is. You can already begin to wonder what it is you would be doing if you had never learnt to smoke. We will create a new program to run in place of smoking. The third section is reinforcement. This is the song you can play in the car as loudly as you like. Play it anywhere you choose, wide awake, to reinforce the positive reprogramming that will then be in place. This is a method of activating that new program you have created. So, congratulations on coming this far and let's begin now. Processing Something is always happening inside of you and around you. Programs. As a computer runs programs and you push the buttons to activate them, so programs, ribbons of thought, interlocking chains of events, produce your reality. You've probably run a few programs today, such as brushing your teeth, I hope. My electric toothbrush ran out of steam this morning and, after the initial disappointment of having to use a manual toothbrush and move it up and down myself, 
I was glad the old programme of how to brush your teeth without the use of electricity or batteries was still in there. All I had to do was consciously call it into play. Push the button, if you like. I know people who have stopped smoking for over 10 years and say they could start smoking again easily. Of course, the programme is still there. We don't unlearn anything. Just because we do not do something doesn't mean we forget how to do it. We gather information, data, throughout the whole of our lives. Congratulate yourself now on knowing more about yourself and about life than you have ever known before. We run programs consciously. We push the button. And we also have programs running where others have pushed the button. The program doesn't care who pushed the button. The program is up and running, with or without your conscious intent. Those who have stopped smoking are merely running a different program at those times when they used to run the smoking one. Like when I first used an electric toothbrush on the advice of my dentist, it felt a little strange, though I persevered with it because someone in authority told me I must. I felt as if my eyes were wobbling in my head with the vibration, though now, when I go back to the old programme of manually brushing, it seems like just too much effort. I had created a new programme that was far more effective for me. What's important now is to learn how to create a programme. You've done it so many times. Now is the time to consciously realise how you've done it. Then we'll realise how you operate the programme. How you push the button. Taking some action or definitive step to activate that programme is programming. Previously to now, perhaps the programme seemed already there and it was just a matter of activating them. The idea now is not just to activate the programmes that are there, but to create the programme itself. We will explore the method of creating the programme and thereafter the technique of implementing it. A subtle distinction perhaps, though a very important one. If you want to do something else instead of smoking, you first have to create a new programme. Otherwise, the old one will keep re-establishing itself. Be willing. The programme of smoking is very well defined in the unconscious mind, that part of the mind out of your awareness. Your mind will not be happy if you tell yourself not to run the programme. It needs another to replace it that is better. Only when the new program is better will the old one be replaced. Hopefully you are realising now that you do certain things much more easily and effortlessly than you did ten years ago, as you have found better ways to do them. Our storehouse of programmes is lacking. It is weak filled with faulty programs that short-circuit themselves or loop too quickly. Shallow programs from advertising, from films, books, conversations. Effective, dynamic, powerful programs easily replace old, outworn ones that have outlived their usefulness. Choice no one can make you do anything you don't want to do. You are a grown-up now, a full-grown adult with free will, with choice. So the first question to ask is not, why do I smoke? But what is it about the smoking behaviour that I enjoy? For if a part of you did not enjoy it, or get some benefit from the experience, you would not choose to do it. You may say that you do not recognise the choice here, 
that you feel you just have to do it, and in many senses, you are right. Choice is in the domain of the conscious mind. We take action consciously when we pursue some new activity, when we haven't done that activity before. When we embark upon processing a new task, we could say, in modern terms, that our mind writes a program, storing it to use repeatedly in the future. The neurons begin firing off within our brain, making connections and creating pathways. Do an activity often enough, and pathways are carved deep into the unconscious mind. So that we do not need to consciously tell ourselves how to walk, drive, or brush our teeth. This frees the mind up to worry about all other kinds of stuff, while we are already involved in activity. The unconscious mind cannot choose; it just runs programs. The activity of smoking is deep within the unconscious mind. This activity has become associated with all kinds of other things, such as relaxing, rewarding oneself, socializing, and more. If the unconscious mind has these strong associations, then any attempt you make consciously to stop the behavior also means stopping, relaxing. Rewarding yourself and socialising. No wonder it has been difficult in the past to stop. The smoking program. So, you have a program. Perhaps in the past you have promised yourself you will never smoke again, only to find an old program running any time you smell cigarette smoke. Are offered tobacco, or get into your car after work. The program is up and running, whether or not you choose to run it. Your best friend could have hit the enter key. Your worst enemy, the sound of the telephone ringing. Putting the ironing board away. The program is running. It is like your very surroundings are dictating to you when you should smoke. And the conscious mind no longer has control over what you want to do any more. Your surroundings, the people you meet, the objects of your reality push your buttons and run your programs. You need better, tighter security. It's time to take your power back. Your smoking behaviour is an old program. You have lots of old programs in there that have long outgrown their usefulness, and they stopped running years ago. So you just don't run the program entitled "Ways to Get Out of a PE Lesson" or "How to Behave Older Than I Really Am So That I Can Get Into the Cinema." <laughs> Maybe a remnant of the former remains. If you are paying for a gym membership and find yourself much too busy to go, and maybe the latter has been replaced by the new program of "How to Look Younger Than I Really Am." The best way to deal with old and useful programs is to expose them to your conscious mind and replace them with new, more useful ones. Control. The good news is that you are the programmer. You created the program. You taught your unconscious mind to do this, and associated all kinds of good things with it. Now I don't know what your mind has associated with smoking, though you do. Many of my clients have said the following. Well, it's like a reward. Ah, home from work, put the kettle on, and kick my work shoes off. Or ah, the food's all done, the kids have settled down. Or it's when I want to relax. Oh, telly on, time to be happy here at home, relaxing. 
it gets me off to a good start. Well, you know, when you get up in the morning and the first thing you've got to do is switch on the kettle and light a cigarette to wake you up? Or, well, it gives me a break, I suppose. I'll look through my work schedule for the day and plan when I'll be able to nip outside for a quick one. I just can't wait until I get in the car and shut the door on work. Do you know what I mean? Well, it's about socialising. Half out and about up the town tonight with the girls. Now's the time to swap ciggies and stand together against all those meanies who despise us because we stink, we're dirty or unsociable. This last one is the strangest. As in many cases, a client will talk of their frustration as the very society that encouraged you to begin this behaviour with its smoky detective films and glamorous movies now ostracises you for doing it. All these good reasons we give to support the smoking behaviour. This isn't what smoking did for you in the beginning. I would ask my clients, remember the first time, however vivid, however vague. Can you remember taking that first puff and deciding this is what I want to do for the rest of my life because it does such wonderful things for me? No, your whole physicality would have rejected this very strange idea of inhaling smoke. Your unconscious was in fact used to the idea of ridding the body of any smoke that entered the lungs, remembering how you would cough when too close to a bonfire or in any smoky situation. It was its job to protect you. It is its job to protect you. Do something often enough and the unconscious mind takes over the process. You convinced your mind it was okay to smoke. It was a good thing to do, in fact. You programmed your mind. Anyone who wears contact lenses can remember how strange it was to begin with, trying to convince your own eye that you weren't going to hurt it, as this big finger came towards you to affix a little piece of silicon. Any parent will know how difficult it is to hold your baby tightly whilst a nurse sticks a big needle into its tiny arm as you convince yourself it is for the best. Addiction. Yes, many reasons. Many subroutines running, associating smoking with good things. I say to my clients that the addiction you have is an addiction to feeling better, feeling good, confident, able to cope more. And that is a good program. You can run this feel-good program without the smoke being involved, you know. Many clients realise it is not the addiction they struggle with. And, I am told, a true addiction would wake you in the night like heroin does. Most people I speak to agree that it is mostly habit, mostly associations, subroutines. Let's keep the good things and release the bonds that you've been encouraged to forge between reward, socialising, companionship, relaxation and this old and useful behaviour. As you have made these bonds, you can unmake them. You are the programmer. You have the power. These good things have merely become symbolised by a cigarette or tobacco and you'll just choose a different action to remind yourself when you need a break, when you deserve a reward, when it's time to socialise, allow yourself the pockets of pleasure the old behaviour of smoking gave you. So, 
Let's continue now with the next step. Let's create your new programme.